Good morning and welcome to our God's Word for Today devotional. Our passage for today or chapter for today in the book of Psalms is Psalm chapter 26. And the first verse is really a striking verse because this is a request of David to be vindicated before the Lord. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. Let me read the whole chapter, Psalm 26, verses 1 to 12 for today. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and my mind, for your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in your faithfulness. I do not sit with men of falsehood, nor do I consort with hypocrites. I hate the assembly of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar, O Lord proclaiming thanksgiving aloud and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Do not sweep my soul away with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, in whose hands are evil devices and whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I shall walk in my integrity, redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground in the great assembly I will bless the Lord. David's request here to be vindicated before the Lord. What he meant by here is that he will be proven not guilty, but proven that he was righteous. Definitely David was maligned by his enemies. Otherwise, he shouldn't have asked God to vindicate him. David claims to have walked consistently in integrity so that he was not pretentious or he was not hypocritical. A man of a full of integrity like David does not mean that he is perfect. He knew he was settled in his sins because the Lord has forgiven him. So when we say that he was a man of full of integrity, it does not mean that he is sinless, but that his sins are taken care of because they were forgiven before the Lord. He settled this before the Lord. And because of his request, he asked the Lord to search him and see that his claim is substantial. Such is the man of integrity before God. He is bold and courageous. And let's remember, this is boldness and courage. is not because of his inherent propensity to be holy and blameless. Nobody is holy and blameless by nature. We are sinful. Everyone is guilty. But the basis of his courage is the steadfast love and faithfulness of the Lord. There was no self-aggrandizement or self-generated purpose here to exalt himself, but to exalt God. He narrated what he does, what he does not do to the Lord or what he does not do as a person. In verse 4 to 6, he said, I do not sit with men of falsehood, nor do I consort with hypocrites. I hate the assembly of evil doers, and I, I will not sit with the wicked. And that is what he did not do. And that's the profile of the blessed man, according to Psalm 31, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walks not in the council of the ungodly, nor standeth with the with, with sinners, you know, seated at the seat of the scornful. So in other words, he distanced himself with these men, wicked men, by saying to the Lord, do not sweep my soul away with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, in whose hands are evil devices and whose right hands are full of bribes. So that's his request from God in verse 9 and 10. When we look into the New Testament, 
in the great tightly priestly prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ in John 17, did not Jesus desire us to be holy also as his people? Because there in verse 15 and 16, John 17, 15 and 16, he prayed, I do not ask that you take them out of the world. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Why? Why is it that he wants us to be protected from the world? Because the world's culture is characterized with evil desires. As John described it in 1 John chapter 2, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life, they are all against the Father. In contrary, the believer's delight is to do God's will. John 7 verse 17. So this is what David did not do. He did not mingle with weak, evil men. He did not compromise with them. But as a righteous person, he is not noted only what he did not do, but he was also noted on what he does. Because he said in verse 6 to 8, I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar, O Lord proclaiming thanksgiving aloud and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Yes, he did not mingle with wicked men because he was so busy. He was so occupied with godly men and women worshiping in the temple. He loved the habitation of God's house. He was occupied with praise and worship. So the principle here is that if we are busy in the Lord, there is no time anymore for, for us to spend towards the devil. In other words, he was so fully committed to praise and worship and serve God that there was no room for the devil to come in. His heart is on full throttle unto the Lord. David's pursuit of holiness was neither sporadic nor was it temporary. His sincere devotion to God was the regular pattern of his life. It was not something of an on. It was consistent. Was it not? He chose to be a man of integrity because he relied on God's redemption and grace. We see that in verse 11. It was not because of his own innate capability to be blameless. He relied on God's redemption forgiveness, salvation, and even the graciousness of God. And this is our confidence as well today. We can only be faithful because we rely on God's grace, His faithfulness. In this, He confidently claims He is standing on level ground. As He said that in verse 12. In Psalm 143 verse 10, David also prays there, Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. The level ground is a symbol of security. The believer cannot slip from the path of righteousness if he is submissive to God's will and obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Are we standing on a level ground? I hope that, like David, we pursue a life that is righteous, blameless before God. Not that we are sinless, but because we don't want that our lives will be marred with sin. A Christian is not sinless, but one who is striving to sin less and less and less. Is this your desire? I hope that by the grace of God and by the help of the Holy Spirit, we will pursue a life like David. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you that Although David was not perfect, he was far from being perfect because he was sinful, yet he is a man after your heart because he does not love to dwell in sin. He does not want to wallow in sin. He made right himself before you, and he wants to be vindicated. He wants to live pure before you, Lord. Let be that this will be our desire also today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.